Warning. This program may contain material of an explicit or graphic nature. Viewer discretion is advised. Casting Undead from the B-Ward, this is the Postmortem Show. I'm Dom. And I'm JD. And today, as suggested by listener Ken from Leisure Time Games, we are going to give you the top five What the Fuck Did I Just Watch movies. Yep. Not necessarily horror movies. He described the list and he gave his top five, which we will be reading at the end of the episode. But he described his suggestion as being movies that end up horrific even though they're not necessarily billed as horror movies. Yeah. Which I like that. Yeah. This is one we haven't done before. Yeah. I, I went with ones that, uh, yeah, they, they ended up horrific, but even not necessarily in the most like horror movie sort of way. Uh, like, just movies where when, when it's done, you just kind of sit there with your mouth open for a little bit afterwards. Like, yeah. Okay. But not in a bad way. Just in a, like, this, I need to take a shower sort of way. <laughs> I think that our list will be very diverse for yeah. that reason. Yeah. So, hopefully we won't have any crossover. But, uh, yeah, we are running out of topics now. Yeah. This is 67 episodes deep at the recording of this show. Yeah. So, guys, send in your emails. Postmortemshow at gmail.com. Suggest us a top five list. We will read your list on the air. I keep having people hit me up that listen to the show that, that I know, uh-huh. and they're like, I've got some top five ideas. I just haven't gotten them together yet. I'm like, yeah. well, fucking send them to me. Send them. Even if you don't have a top five list and you just want to hear what our top five of something yeah, are. Yeah, or you can them. just send it later. Yeah. At least we can tell you, oh, we've already done that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or not, so. Yeah, we're going to get into the top five, what the fuck did I just watch list. <laughs> Before that, we got a little bit of horror news. Horror news. As previously reported, the book My Friend Dahmer is being turned into a feature film. It just premiered at the Tribeca Film Festival and has been bought by FilmRise. They picked up the North American rights for distribution on it. Cool. So it's getting great reviews. It even had a, two, a, a 8.3 on IMDb after the festival. Nice. So by the reviewers, which is pretty good. Yeah. It's going to star Ross Lynch, Anne Heche, Dallas Roberts, and Alex Wood. Nice. I almost thought you were going to say Alex Winter for a second. I, I got wish. a little bit excited. <laughs> As the friend? Yeah. <laughs> Dahmer. <laughs> Bill and Dahmer. <laughs> Bill and Dahmer's excellent journey. Bill and Jeff's cannibalistic adventure. <laughs> Entertainment Weekly reports that the upcoming Marvel film, The New Mutants, will be a full-fledged horror movie set in the X-Men universe. Director Mark Boone, a longtime fan of the teen-centered X-Men spinoff, sees a much more surreal world in these comics, which he describes as John Hughes meets Stephen King. He says that with this upcoming project, there will be no costumes or supervillains, and that it will be something very different from any comic book franchise films in the past. The movie is set to star Maisie Williams from Game of Thrones as the lycanthropic mutant Wolfsbane, and Anya Taylor-Joy from Split and the Witch as the psychic mystic Magic. Both good actresses. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the movie is currently scheduled for a spring 2018 release. New Mutants was a fucking weird, weird comic when it came out. It was the, like, teenagers at Charles Xavier's school that were still training to be X-Men sort of broke off and went and did their own thing. And the writing on it, they got into a lot more weird, like, abstract multiverse things, and there was a lot of, like, Lovecraftian stuff tied into that. So it'll be interesting to see how that translates to film. Well, they're making a, a Venom movie yeah. that's going to be straight horror also. Yeah, with Tom Hardy. I'm hoping that it has Carnage. That's the only. I'm not a comic book guy, but I like the Venom and Carnage thing. Because Carnage oh, yeah. actually kill people. Yeah, Carnage you know? is fucked up. Yeah. And, and so did Venom. You know? Yeah, <laughs> for sure. And, uh, you know, they have been going 
a little different with the comic books with Deadpool and Logan. Yeah. You know, they've kind of made the R rated comic book movies for the adults as yeah. opposed to pandering to the kids. And also moving away from the guys in spandex fighting, you know, other guys in spandex kind of thing. Like pro wrestling? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, like pro wrestling with powers. And, and it, you know, it's, they're sort of starting. Even the X Men films, while they're still like, you know, heroes versus villains, the last couple of ones have sort of been like. You know, the, the Days of the Future Present ones and, like, the ones taking in the past in the 60s have been, like, like James Bond movies with mutants and things like that. So oh, that's be cool. interesting. Yeah, I don't, I don't really watch the comic book movies. It's just, there's too much. And it really pisses me off when, uh, for instance, okay, they're going to take Tom Hardy, who's a good mm-hmm. actor. Mm-hmm. Now he's going to be doing nothing but X-Men movies. Same with fucking Captain Picard, you know? Yeah. Like, if he was doing some cool shit, no, but he's doing X-Men movies for so many years. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, they take some of these good actors and just rob them from being able to make yeah. good, great movies to make that money on the superhero movies. Yeah. I don't know if, if Tom Hardy in, in the Venom movie, I don't know if Venom would last more than a couple movies, though. Like, Venom was always better in other people's stuff when he was in his standalone Venom adventures. It, it got repetitive after a while. Yeah. So, it, you know, if, if we got one really good Venom movie out of it, maybe two... And then he went off and did other things. You know, that that could be cool. Yeah. Well, new film called Better Watch Out is coming. Director Chris Peckover has said it's like Home Alone meets Scream. Okay. Better Watch Out provides a twist on the home invasion subgenre. Set in an American suburb on a snowy evening leading up to Christmas, babysitter Ashley has to defend the 12-year-old boy she is watching from strangers breaking into the home. But it's far from a normal home invasion. It's Santa Claus and elves. I have no idea what it is. <laughs> I hope not. Well, that's all the information they've given up. But okay. It's kids. I, I like horror movies with kids in them. Yeah. You know, some of them are lame, some of them are good. But if they make it, like, brutal and stuff yeah. with kids, I'm going to watch it with my kids. Nice. And, you know, there's sort of becoming a, a throwback to, like, I, I call it the Boys and Bikes movies. You know? Yeah. But Boys, Bikes, and Backpacks. But it could be girls too, you know. It's just yeah. there, there's sort of there, there's becoming a market for that again. Yeah, Stranger Things really yeah. tapped into that. Yeah, you know, our our generation being the ones that actually spend the money on the uh, to see these things, they're kind of appealing to what we grew up on and what we're nostalgic for. So yeah. if they and and Stephen King like likes to focus on children in his stories because nothing is fucking scarier than being a kid. Yeah, yeah. Nothing scarier than being a kid in this situation because yeah. you're almost powerless. Yeah. So that's that's a good way to to, to do it. Uh, well, uh, cool. I'm interested to hear more about it. Better watch out. A preview has been released for a South American splatter film that's about to make the film festival rounds entitled What the Water's Left Behind. In the film, a group of students travel to the ruins of a town destroyed by a flood to make a documentary, but soon realize that they're not alone. This film is being touted as Argentina's answer to The Hills Have Eyes. The two-minute preview is chock full of sex, violence, and power tool surgery. Awesome. And uh, the movie will make its premiere at the Count Festival in France later this year, and then will be shopped around for a distributor. It's the third feature film directed by the Onetti brothers, who have made a name for themselves in South America by making hyper-violent horror movies with a wide range of influence from American Gothic to Italian Giallo films. Oh, awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, I like how uh, horror in other countries is kind of coming coming out like Baskin from yeah. Turkey and things like that. Um, I'm really looking forward to a lot of uh, these, especially like third world countries. Yeah. When you live a horrific life, like when your society is violent and stuff like that, you can tap into that yeah. a lot better than, you know... Guy that grows up in the suburbs, right. probably. <laughs> and they don't have Hollywood to water their movies down there. Yeah, they just make what they want to make. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, hopefully get funding for it. Where, you know, in Hollywood now, it's like, we got to put our money in what's safe. we got to put our money in, like Stephen Barrow was talking about. Yeah. We had him on a couple of weeks ago. They're afraid yeah. to make some straight horror. Yeah. Got to water it down and make it so that more people will want to watch it. Yeah. That can handle it. So, which is very sad. Yeah. So hopefully, hopefully that'll be good. The preview is available on either iHorror or Bloody Disgusting. I don't remember, but it's also on YouTube. I'm going to check it out, yeah, since we're done recording. So, Christina Ricci, John Cusack, and Brendan Fletcher. You know who Brendan Fletcher is? He was uh, the star of the only good Uwe Boll film, Rampage. Okay. He's the killer guy in Rampage. Yeah, yeah. And he was on Freddy vs. Jason and some other stuff. 
They're set to star in an upcoming mind control horror movie. It's going to be directed by Rob W. King called Distorted. Follows Lauren, played by Ricci, who's a bipolar artist dealing with the loss of her child. Her and her husband, played by Fletcher, decide to move from their dangerous neighborhood to a luxurious apartment building called the Pinnacle. It boasts ultra modern design and integrated security, but Lauren begins to suspect the building has a dark side. Dark side. She seems she seeks out the help of an investigative journalist played by Cusack. Together they begin to suspect the Pinnacle security systems may be sublimin- subliminally subjugating its unsuspecting residents. Interesting. So a home security horror movie? Yeah. That could that could be interesting. If you think about With it, like it's technology like, and stuff like that, you know, Siri in, in Alexa, everyone's lives, you know, like yeah, exactly. those kind of things. But it's programming you instead of you programming it. Yeah, it sounds like some like Black Mirror kind of stuff. Plus, it's got Christina Ricci, who yeah. I've always had the hots for. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And yeah, John Cusack's done some good stuff in horror. And yeah, he's hit or miss. Yeah, um, Brendan Fletcher's a good actor. Yeah, I like him a lot. So I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, one. he can make a new Ebola movie. Good. You know, yeah, if you can. Make an Uwe Bowl movie passable. You're on my side. Fuck you, Bull. Taint a mile long. No balls. You're all taint. Landing strip taint. Wee wee to butthole. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, for my last bit of news, I actually want to talk about some, some shit that I did last week. And uh, some of the stuff that's happened in the aftermath. Uh, last... Uh, Necrophilia? Yeah. Yeah. And, and the d- d- diseases you can get from it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a horrible thing. <laughs> Uh, Last Thursday, uh, Cal Poly, our local university here in San Luis Obispo. Where we did our screening of Regurgitated Sacrifice. Yeah, where at the beginning of this year they hosted Milo Yiannopoulos. Well, on Thursday they hosted this chick named Lauren Southern. And she's not quite as famous as Milo, but she's building a name for herself. She's a big name on the alt-right. And uh, she's from Canada. And she's super fucking racist. She's so racist that she literally has to go to other countries to fuck with their brown people. Like, it's not enough for her to just stay home or, like, come down to America and fuck with, like, Mexicans and Arab people and black people. She actually has to, like, go to Italy and fuck with refugees. She got arrested in Italy a couple weeks ago because she and this group called Generation Identity, which is a documented white supremacist group in Europe, uh, were stopping boats from rescuing Middle Eastern refugees that had been left at sea. By their human traffickers. They just wanted to leave the people out there to die. Because they didn't want any more brown people coming into Europe. She's not even from Europe. She just wants to go fuck with these people. So she comes to Cal Poly. And they advertise her entire thing as real women wanted. With a picture of a 1950s housewife in a kitchen. Or traditional women wanted. And she does this whole speech on how rape culture doesn't exist. And how women shouldn't be in universities. And how... She went to the university to tell women they shouldn't be at the university? Yeah. And she brought with her the Proud Boys, the fucking neo-Nazi gang from California. They showed up with her. Cal, uh, Cal Poly students did a, a march against rape culture beforehand where they you know, put a protest group together and they marched to where Lawrence Southern was doing her thing and they set up a PA system and they had actual rape survivors talk about their story you know, because rape culture is a real thing. And had these girls, like these brave fucking girls, come forward and talk about the horrible shit that happened to them. And these fucking Proud Boy scumbags were out there fucking yelling at them, telling them they were liars, telling them that they just felt guilty, telling them just because your uncle fucked you doesn't mean every man's a rapist. Like, yelling these things at these chicks. Wow. Yeah. Fucking scumbags. Yeah. Um, And they're, you know, live casting this whole thing on Facebook, trying to, like, start shit. They were directly trying to... Antifa showed up, you know, because that's what Antifa does. And uh, I went with Antifa, and I stood with Antifa, and we tried to kind of, like, form a barrier and drown them out with megaphones and shit like that. And they were directly trying to antagonize us into starting into, into fighting with them, which we didn't do because we're not fucking stupid. Now, where this ties into what's going on in the real world is their next stop was Portland. And what happened in Portland this week? A fucking alt-right white supremacist with ties to the, this group Stabs two people to death in a fucking racially motivated crime on a bus in Portland. Yeah. Like, 
this shit is real, people. Yeah, <laughs> this shit is happening horror. in the world, yeah. and I'm and I'm not just saying things that I'm reading in the news. This is shit that I'm witnessing with my own two eyes yeah. because I'm involved. They're fucking. It seems like racism. You know, it's been people have always been racist, or there's always been racist people, but it seems like lately because our society is getting more liberal, it seems like people are coming out of the woodwork and have to. They have to be not they closeted to, racists, they but back. they have to push back against you know. Society getting more accepting of yeah. people of you know gays and and you know that kind of stuff yeah. you know that they have to just now be assholes in public instead of just behind closed doors and they call it being politically incorrect or whatever yeah. and they're being emboldened by people like Donald Trump like people like Milo people like Lauren Southern all those fucking Breitbart and Infowars fuckheads like the these people are escalating in their behavior to the point where people are now dying three people have been killed by white supremacists this week. Yeah, and this isn't about like Republicans and Democrats. I mean, fuck Donald Trump. That's my personal opinion. But this isn't even about like fuck you because you voted for Donald Trump. These are people who are out to who are hurt actual, actual Nazis. people, yeah, actual fucking Nazis. And you know, in the beginning, when we were saying you know people like you and I who who have been fighting Nazis since our teenage years, you know, and we're saying these are Nazis. These are actual fucking Nazis. People are like, oh no, you're just saying that because blah blah blah. No, these are actual fucking <laughs> yes, Nazis. They are. These people are in our backyards. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I, I'm just saying to our, our listeners, like, keep your eyes open, you know, and and watch your own back. And whether you're white or a person of color or you know an ally to the the, the queer community or you know a member of the queer community yourself, whatever, just like. Watch your back, because these people are out to fuck people up. And yep. they're out to actually bring violence to our neighborhoods. Yes, and they need the violence brought to their fucking face, in yeah. my opinion. But We are not the political show. We are the horror, comedy, <laughs> masturbation podcast. We're a pet masturbation and horror podcast. So we're not going to delve too much into the politics, but these things need to be said yeah. occasionally. And it's our show, goddammit. And we get to talk about what we want to talk <laughs> about, but occasionally we're going to bring stuff up, um, but... We are going to get back into some horror. And some dick jokes. And some dick jokes. And maybe we talk about my dog some more. I'm actually going to talk about some incest later. (laughs) And And your dog, actually. Yes. (laughs) I have it in my notes. (laughs) All right. Well, that's it for horror news. We will be back with the good movie and the bad movie. Or in my case, the good movie and the weird movie. Which is kind of fitting for our, our, our theme for this episode. Yes, it is. Because I do have a what the fuck did I just watch movie yeah. that could have made my list, but I just saw it. Speaking of what the fuck did I just watch, I watched The Evil Within after recording our last episode. You told me. You liked it more I, than me. I really liked it. It, it, was, not, it was not a classic movie. I, 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 won't say, I won't go that far. But it was a unique piece of film that definitely stands on its own as whatever it is. Yeah, uh, I don't. I don't think they're millionaire max. Yeah, there, there never has and there never will be anything like that movie ever again. I don't think, and uh, I appreciated it. Yep, check it out, Evil Within. I thought it was okay. I gave it my bad rating because it was so disjointed and filmed over ten years from different yeah. haircuts. Yeah, that, that definitely stood out. Like people <laughs> aged ten years between scenes. back and forth. Yeah, aging. Yeah. So, well, check out Evil Within. It is out now, and we will be back with the good movie. And the bad movie after this. Hi, thanks for listening to the Postmortem Podcast. If you want to support us, go to our website at www.postmortemshow.com and click the Amazon link. By clicking on the Amazon banner, Amazon will give a small percentage of the purchase price of your item back to the Postmortem Podcast at no additional cost to you. That's right. It doesn't cost you any money. We get money. You want us to keep doing this? You want more Doug Jones talk? You want more dick and fart talk? I don't care. We're going to do it. Fund our filthy, filthy habits. Yes, and you, they are many, and they are fast. And most of them aren't legal. <laughs> yes. Click the banner. Just do it. Come on, don't be a dick. Give us money. It's time for the good movie. And the bad movie. Like I said, I don't have a good movie and a bad movie this week. I have a weird movie and a good movie. So why don't you fire off your bad movie first? Get this get this turd out of the colon.
<laughs> so, my bad movie isn't just a bad movie, it's a disappointing movie. Oh, really? Yeah, and, and that, that makes it all the worse. Yeah, that is that does suck. And this may, may raise some hackles, but I don't give a fuck. My bad movie is Alien Covenant. Oh, wow. 2017 sci-fi horror directed by Ridley Scott. Bad movie. Wow. Bad Ridley. Was it the CGI? Is that what it did it? Not that. That was a big part of it. But, uh, so, the story is that there's this colony ship bound for a remote planet. They discover, uh, they, they get this emergency signal from another planet. Same old alien shit. Yeah. Go there, and they find David from the first movie, Michael Fassbender, the, uh, the robot. Uh-huh. Um, and a bunch of aliens. And then, all shit breaks loose. Um... It was just another fucking alien story. This shit has gotten formulaic to the point that it feels like Ridley Scott's just saying, fuck it, you've seen all this before, so I'm not going to spend any time building anything or making anything make sense. I'm just going to do paint by numbers and hope you give me money for it. I heard mixed reviews. I've heard a lot of people say it sucked. I've have, I have heard some people say that they enjoyed it. Yeah. Because it was what it was, and it was just another alien movie, and they missed alien movies. Mm-hmm. And that there's a lot of Geiger imagery and stuff like that. Uh, see the thing is like Alien and, and I, after I watched the movie I was so pissed off that I went and watched the 90 minute documentary about the first Alien all over again it's on YouTube it comes in the DVD set and shit where they interview everyone and talk about like what made the first Alien such a good movie and the problem with Alien Covenant is that Ridley Scott broke all of his own fucking rules like you never show the whole monster you know, you keep the whole thing shrouded in darkness, you leave an air of mystery to it, and even though you've got these great sets and the this awesome killer monster and all this, you know, shit happening, the core of both Alien and Aliens, at least, is the characters. You know, you've got this ensemble cast yeah. where everyone is a distinct character, has a motivation, has a reason for being there, and you don't want them to die. They're not just victims. Yeah. They're they're solid characters, and it's not just Ripley, you know? And it's the fear of the unknown. It's yeah. the H.P. Lovecraft kind of thing. Fear of the yeah, unknown. exactly. They're, the two scariest concepts, to me, are space mm-hmm. and deep sea. Yeah. Those are the two scariest things. Because you're, Cause you're out of your element. Yeah. We're totally out of our right. human yeah. element. It's not a guy just trying to break into your house and stab you. Yep. It's you're on a fucking ship in yeah. the middle of space or you're in this fucking alien world. Yeah. Where you can't run away. Yeah. Yeah, because you'll get fucked up. And as far as the characters go, nobody except David and uh, Michael Fassbender actually played two synthetics. He played you know David from the first movie and another synthetic character. Whose name I can't remember off the top of my head. I heard that that was the best part of yeah, the movie. He, his, my, his performance yeah. and the two characters were iconic. Yeah, and they were. I even heard so far as someone said that it's the best alien character ever in any of the movies. I would, Better than Ripley. I would agree with that. Really? Yeah. And still a bad movie. My, yeah, Michael Fassbender, even with his fucking tour de force performance, <laughs> could not save it. Wow. Um, you know, and, and he plays, David is evil in this movie, and he plays evil so well. I mean, he, he played, you know, great Magneto, too. He, he's, he's a great actor. But for the most part, there was nothing for any of the other characters to define them or make them stand out. They were just like, you know, fucking grist for the mill. There was a badass female, of course, but like she went from average to hardcore with no real buildup. Yeah, like, she didn't even have a real reason to hate the alien. Her husband died in an accident on the ship before the alien was even encountered. Wow. Yeah. Um, I'm still gonna watch and it then, when it comes out, but I will not see yeah. it in the theater. I decided before your review even that I'm not gonna yeah. see it in the theater just because all the mixed. You right. Know? And Danny McBride plays like the stereotypical like space cowboy character. He's the pilot of the ship. He wears a cowboy hat. His name's Tennessee, and his character was good. But that's only because I like Danny McBride. There was, I heard he wasn't funny in this. Like he no, didn't play the laughs at all. He just yeah. did this strict acting. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool. And, I and thought. he was good. And he that showed range. Yeah, he, that's cool. Well, he he did have some funny parts, but it was like casual working man funny. Like you know, like like Yafet Koto, like in, uh, Larry the Cable Guy. No, no, not quite like <laughs> casual working man. He's a cable guy. Um, His name's Larry. Yeah, you know, know. like the two technicians in in the first Alien, like Yafet Koto and Harry Dean Stanton's character in the first Alien. How they were just like fucking dudes, you know? And yeah. like some of the shit they said were, was funny. Like, that that's what it was. But that was all him. That wasn't the writing. That was just him being Danny McBride. Um, every other character, I don't even fucking remember their names. Like, 
this movie made the cast and, and characters of Prometheus look like brilliant characters in a, in yeah, a excellent he, movie. The worst part of Prometheus is when they're on the ship and the characters. That's yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the bad part and it's too long. Yeah. But um and, and this one makes Prometheus look like solid gold. Really? That yeah. sucks. Uh, yeah, I showed my kids Alien the director's cut. Uh-huh. The 1979 re- original Alien director's cut on Friday night. We all came out here, watched it in the dark with the sound turned up and shit. Yes. It still holds up to me. Oh yeah. All of them fell asleep. Ah, not because of the movie, but just because uh, they're kids. Watch that yeah. night, their kids. It's dark, but uh, yeah, it still held up to me. Yeah. But the biggest sin of this movie in terms of characters is that, and this isn't a spoiler because they they give it to you right away. You can't even really give spoilers for this movie because everything is so obviously set up. Yeah, but they fucking killed off Elizabeth Shaw, Numi Rapace's character from Prometheus. They killed her off off camera. She didn't even get an on screen death. They just show up and she's already dead. Like, there she is in the ground. Like, they did, They spent a whole movie building her character. Yeah. And then in the sequel, she appears in a hologram for like two seconds, singing John Denver's Country Road, and then she's dead. That sucks. Yeah. Um, Ridley Scott's eye for direction is still good. His sets are still good. The way he works the camera is still good. But the screenplay was shit. Everything else felt totally rushed. There was no build. There was no sense of looming dread. It was just like, let's do the thing and move on. It felt like he didn't give a shit. And the special effects were really, really evidence of that. It was all CG. It looked terrible. It looked like video game graphics. 1979 Alien has amazing graphics. There is no excuse... For 2017 Alien, yeah. have worse graphics. Yeah. With more of a budget. Yeah. You know there's more money pumped into this yeah. fucker. Way more. Exponentially more money pumped and into it. And it's so fucking stupid that they have to go to computer. Yeah. And like, that's what made Alien so bad. Except for, you know, I remember as a kid being terrified in the chest burster scene. Uh huh. When that happened, uh-huh. when all my kids are sitting here, we're in the dark, we're watching it, it's all intense, you know? Yeah. They're like, <gasps> You know, like all like when it happened with the blood and stuff. Yeah. What's like, oh my god, what's happening? Then when the little guy pops up, mm-hmm. they all start cracking up, <laughs> laughing. Aww. And then when it goes off, they're just laughing like that's so funny. Huh? It's so silly. Look at it. Yeah. I'm like, oh. Well. And I was looking at Jim like they're kind of right. <laughs> if they, if you think that's silly, then the chest burster scene in this movie is a fucking clown show. It comes out butt first, like just cheeks. No, it com- <laughs> it comes out and it has arms. It immediately recognizes David as mommy. And when David, like, puts out its arm, his arms to, like, welcome it into the world, it looks back at him and opens its arms to him and goes, ah! The movie goes full retard at that point. That's stupid. It's, you know, like, they they were trying to, like, give the alien emotions and, like... No! Uh, and that's, no. that's what killed Alien Resurrection. And... At least in Alien Resurrection, it was they were trying something new and it didn't work. You know what I we really... We know in this movie that it doesn't work. Why the fuck is he doing it again? You know what I really want to see, though, is aliens, like, just chilling in their native habitat and, like, piloting ships and stuff. You never get enough of that. No, they, they're, they're, they explain that in this movie. Oh, they do? They don't have a native habitat. Oh, well, don't <laughs> spoil it. I, 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 I won't go any farther than that. Um... But yeah, the the alien in yeah, alien in parasite, aliens yeah. in Alien Three even it, with it being an animatronic there's, puppet, uh, it, to it, me it has a tangibility to it. it there, there's something about it that even though like even though it's a puppet, it, the fact that it has dimension and like yeah. heft to it when it comes out of the shadows yeah. makes it look real. And in this, it's literally walking upright like a dude walking around, dur, 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 and they bring it out in total broad daylight. And it looks fucking terrible. Oh. Yeah. It's... To me, there's only two alien movies. There's Alien and Aliens. Prometheus isn't even an alien movie to mm-hmm. me. It's like, maybe it's the same universe, but when I think about Alien, I think about Alien and Aliens. Mm-hmm. And I am one of the few that thinks Alien is better than Aliens. I know a lot of people love Aliens. Mm-hmm. I love it too. But I think the original Alien is the best one. I like them about the same. I, li- I actually like Alien 3. I think it, it it's, it's underrated for what it is. Um... And I even like the first AVP, as stupid and fucking silly as it is. Yeah. But, again, in that movie, they had alien puppets, at least in the close-up scenes. Yeah. You know, the, they had the animatronics. And in this movie, even when it gets close up, even, like, there's a scene in the, in where some people are in a shower, and the alien tail, like, comes in under the shower and fucking kills one of them. 
Even that was CG. They couldn't have. They didn't have the fucking decency to even make a fake tail. Alien shower rape. That's yeah. our rating system. All right. Yeah. I, I was going to say zombie John Denver's at <laughs> first, but I I felt raped by this movie. <laughs> <laughs> so fuck alien this. shower rape scenes. Yeah. It, fuck this movie. It's time to hang up the boots on the franchise. I uh, this was a cynical cash grab and an example of a director coasting on the. I, I say don't anything. hang up the boots. Let's get somebody in here other than Ridley Scott. Yeah. Who is fucking hungry? That wants all practical. That wants the same thing we that want. Wants to make a good. Let's movie. go out on a good note. Yeah, not on this shit. It's time to hang up the boots on Ridley Scott making these movies. Yeah, because um, this movie was a, a slap in the face to the fans, as far as I'm concerned. Wow, it's that not bad. Even huh? Michael Fassbender couldn't save it, and he was excellent. Well, we've already done about 11 minutes on Alien, yeah. so let's wrap this fucker up. I'm going to give it a 3 out of 10 Alien Shower Rapes. 3 out of 10 And the 3 is just for Michael rapes. Fassbender in the sets. Wow. Yeah. That's not good. Well, like I said, I don't have a bad movie. My movie that is my bad movie slot, as opposed to my good movie, actually has a pretty strong rating with me. But it's the weird movie. It is the What the Fuck Did I Just Watch movie, just like our list today. Okay. Streaming now on Amazon Prime, 2015, written and directed by Dorian Weinzimmer, Chicago Rot. Have you heard of this? I saw it on the list on Amazon, but I have not watched it. After years of rotting in Joliet, Les, a wrongfully imprisoned street legend known as The Ghoul, is released into a mad search through Chicago's back alleys for the man who slaughtered his mother and robbed him of his soul. Aided by mysterious benefactors, he must delve beneath the city into a modern labyrinth of gutters whose tendrils have grown deep while he was gone. What unfolds is a desperate tale of brute force tragedy set in the supernatural underworld of Chicago, where heroes are reduced to horror shows, villains dream of their own demise, and good and evil prove to be antiquated concepts. Okay. I heard mixed reviews about this. I heard it's got really good gore and stuff enough to be considered horror but i would consider it more of a psychedelic crime drama yeah it sounds very like like hard-boiled noir kind of thing it is kind of like that but it goes way off this is a weird fucking movie it's like natural born killers with the weird natural born killer Mm -hmm. scene meets adam chaplin meets spawn meets foss love of the damned wow that's a good combination it's a weird fucking movie though so the ghoul is almost like a crow type character, like a flawed vigilante, not so superhero, in search of revenge. Plot of this movie, although summed up on IMDb like I just read, mm-hmm. is very confusing. It bounces around a lot, it's hard to follow. The ghoul gets out of jail and is immediately kidnapped, but escapes and finds his girlfriend. He gets weird visions and messages from a weird green tinted man. Like there's these like robotic green There's like two worlds. And he bounces back and forth from two different worlds. Okay. Almost like he goes into like his mind. I, I don't, I still don't get it. I need to watch this fucker again. I do. I already want you're to watch gonna, it. <laughs> you're going to love it more than me. Yeah. Even. I know you're, this is your fucking style. This is your cup of tea, my friend. He gets weird visions, like I said. There's a cameo by Rip Taylor. <laughs> throwing wow. confetti. Wow. In a weird room where people are listening to dance music while, while watching a projector of these weird images and some guys beating off. He was uncredited, so it may have been a Rip Taylor impersonator, which is even weirder. Is Rip Taylor even alive? Cameo by a Rip Taylor impersonator. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. I no, wish you had read that before. Rip Taylor impersonators would have been a great rating system. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is now. Rip Taylor impersonators. <laughs> Raped in the shower by Rip Taylor impersonator. <laughs> <laughs> Rip Taylor shower rape. Rip Taylor? <laughs> we get Kabuki drag queen clowns, psychedelic gladiator battles. I know you. I've heard you need to watch this several times to get it, and I'll probably watch it again because I'm still not done with it. I have thought about it a lot since this. Like, what the fuck? What the fuck did I just watch? <laughs> the theme of this list. It's perfect to talk about when we're doing this list. I w- I would even say I'm going to put it on my honorable mentions. I'm not going to put it in my top five because I like the movies in my top five more. Mm-hmm. But what the fuck? This is a strange movie. Gore is all practical and extremely well done, and there's plenty of it. People have praised the soundtrack, but part of it was like the band Evanescence, which I fucking hate. Yeah. I prefer the mood-settling score they had. They have a great score. 
There's good music in this movie. I just don't like when they cut to this woman singing with a piano, but she's like a character, but she dies, or she's like a zombie or something like that, but she's playing a piano and singing. I don't know who the fuck she was or why, you know. I'm not a fan of, like, rock music in movies unless it's a plot device or some good old punk rock. Yeah. Acting is good, especially the two main characters. Some of the minor characters are questionable, but IMDb gives it a 7.2. So pretty strong for a movie like this. A low-budget, uh, weird fucking movie, 7.2. This is one of the hardest ratings I've done ever. Because I don't know what the fuck to rate this movie because I don't know... I don't know what this fucking movie is or what it set out to do. That makes a good movie sometimes, right. though, you know, where you, you can't even evaluate it. It bounced around so much. It was so hard to follow, but I think if I watched it again, I would like it more. That being said, I'm going to go ahead and give it 7.5 Rip Taylor Raping Impersonator. <laughs> Rip, Taylor, <laughs> Rip Taylor Shower Rape Impersonators. <laughs> I think that you would give it a 10, though. Wow. Well, I'll go off, I'll go home and watch it this week and this, come back with a report. This might be the weirdest movie I've ever seen. Wow. That's, that's, a, that's saying a lot. It's, it can't, it's, there's scenes and plot devices and stuff that can't be explained. It bounces, dude. This is a weird movie. Nice. Like Naked Lunch weird? It, Naked Lunch seems like straight by the numbers compared to this movie. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I love Naked Lunch. Yeah. I like Naked Lunch more. Yeah. But uh, Chicago Rot, check it out. Cool. I recommend anyone who's a fan of this show to watch it and just let me know what the fuck you like. If you guys, if you watch Chicago Rot, email us and tell me what you think it was about because I don't know. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're just gonna have a whole episode dedicated to this show. This I think with the way you get, like, you know, you're very analytical of stuff like Lucifer for Valentine movies and stuff in a way that some people wouldn't see it. I think you're probably gonna be able to tell me what it's about if you watch it a couple times. Nice. And I'll probably have to watch it 20 times. It, it kind of, it, do you remember the old PlayStation game Shadow Man? Did you ever play that? Mm -mm. It was a really good game. It kind of sounds like that. You're this dude. It, it, it's got like more of a voodoo edge to it. Like You're this dude who got out of prison and you're trying to get revenge on the people who sent you there. And there's a voodoo tie-in. And you get these weird visions. But in the game, you never die. Like If you die, you get sent to the Shadowlands. And then you just have to fight your way out of the Shadowlands to get back to where you started. What if you die in the Shadowlands? Uh, it just keep, it, it just keeps it, it. You don't really die; you just get hindered. And oh, okay. like, if it, it, the more life that you have coming out of the Shadowlands, the more life you start out with. But it, there's this whole weird supernatural like underworld thing going on with it too, with like crime bosses, but they're all this, voodoo guys. This, okay, and, this is kind of like that with like an under like the crime world stuff, but uh -huh. it's also like a r weird robotic alien technology or something. Oh wow. It's fucking weird, and then part like almost superhero, uh -huh. but part like you said, like weird, like Naked Lunch, goes from like noir kind of gritty to fucking robotic alien superhero. Okay, and back and forth and weird shit. Rip Taylor, Rip Taylor. <laughs> it sounds like it's a Kashi Miike movie. Fuck, like <laughs> it does, dude. That's a, you know what? It, it's like an American. Takashi Miki movie that's not remade, but like a guy, yeah. maybe he, that's an influence of his yeah. or something. Because it is weird. Like, it, yeah, Taka I, I, I didn't even pick up on that when I was watching it, but just hearing you say it, yeah. it's got some Takashi Miki hanging off. Nice. Right? I, uh, I'm going to go home and watch that tonight. I'm kind of excited now. <laughs> <laughs> the weird movie. That wasn't the bad movie. Yeah. That was the weird movie. My good movie was one that I put off watching for a little while. I'll, I'll get into that for in a minute. But it was really fucking good. Uh, 2014 straight up horror film called Clown. Yes, I liked it. Directed by John Watts. A loving father finds a clown suit for his son's birthday party only to realize that it's not a suit at all. Nope. It clings to him and he becomes this like Finnish clown demon. Much like Aqua Teen Hunger yeah. Force. And, and that's the thing. Like I've often joked that this movie was a rip off of that Aqua Teen Hunger Force episode. But I've got to say that it like really, really moved beyond its own premise to become one of the more original films I've seen in a long time. I really enjoyed it. That's why I told you to watch it. I know yeah. you were saying, hey, the clown's on there. Yeah. I said, you haven't seen that? Yeah. I, I, I put I it off it because like, I'm like, oh, they just made a they just ripped he's off. He's scary, too. Yeah. When he, when, oh, like, yeah. he's in the final stages and stuff, yeah. he's a scary looking fucker. Yeah. I think yeah. I might watch that tonight. And I've seen it before, but like I haven't seen it. After your review, maybe I'll watch it again. Yeah, this movie was a, a total package movie. It had a strong story. It had good characters. It had some genuinely funny moments, but also some seriously unrelenting horror. And it did not pull punches. Like it's hard to make a movie where children are actual murder victims 
and not have it be something that I immediately want to turn off. But Clown pulled it off because they continued to make the death of children something horrific and not just something exploitive. Yeah. Like, there was a consequence to every murder. And yeah. not just for the family of the victims or the, or the other people involved. Like, the, the dad who was turning into the clown demon progressively through the movie still had his human side and would be completely horrified at what he was doing as he was, like, vomiting up the bones of the children that he ate. What, uh, what would be the worst thing you've ever put on that you couldn't take off and it possess you? <laughs> you know what I mean? If there's an object... I'd say that it's probably that mullet wig that I put on that one. <laughs> and you, if it, it, you can take the mullet off and, and it possesses me, I become more like redneck. Would, and, would you have to be like the sledge character that you were doing for that promo the whole time? <laughs> no, that was the mohawk wigs. wig. Oh, yeah. That was the mohawk right, wig. Yeah. No, that, that mullet wig. Oh, yeah. Remember at the old Vendetta school, yeah. there was that mullet wig? Yeah. And, yeah, if I couldn't take that fucker off. And you just became became more, more country, redneck. western, and yeah. redneck. And, yeah, that would huh. be terrible. What would yours be? This is a tangent for your fucking review. Probably one of those doll suits. <laughs> Probably your real your <laughs> You put one of those on, huh? <laughs> I said that you put on. Oh, that, that I have put on. Dom is a oh. man in a rubber mask. <laughs> Shit. I just gave away my secret. <laughs> Femskin. <laughs> yeah, my, my, my femskin. The rating system has changed again. We will now to rate permanent femskin. Dom's fems- femskin. Dom. Dom's permanent femskins <laughs> is how we will rate the last two months. I don't know. When I was a little kid, I was a Swedish chef from the Muppets for Halloween. It would suck to... You become a demonic sweet... Hard and nerd in. Hard and Let's Let's get back to yeah. <laughs> So the characters in this movie were great all around. Every single character had motivations, had a purpose for being there, was someone that you could empathize with. The dad character turning into the demon clown was very sympathetic, and the actor that portrayed him being horrified by his own actions did a very good job. His wife, who like had to question whether she should be helping him or cutting his head off. Like, she was an excellent character. Even the kid was excellent. I The dad really, to me, he really resonated with me, and I felt so bad for him. Yeah. He, you know, he's he, both the protagonist and the antagonist. Yeah. I love that. And when the protagonist and the antagonist are the same fucking guy yeah. in a movie, that's a rare thing, but yeah. I love when they do that, and then they do it right. Yeah, because so. generally when you have a movie like this where someone... Is, is becoming something horrible. It's because they did something fucked up and now they're getting punished yeah. for it. He didn't do anything fucked up. He put on a clown suit to, to entertain, entertain his son. son. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and he was, you know, just a, a good guy and, and everything went wrong. Um, He's a worse clown than John Wayne Gacy. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> pretty bad. Uh, also, uh, Peter Stormare... The always the often imitated, never yeah, duplicated. never never duplicated, <laughs> was fucking awesome as the guy who actually knew what was going on, yeah, and he getting getting progressively more beaten up through the course of the movie. <laughs> uh, the director of this movie was very competent. He took a ridiculous premise, made it scary, built up the scenes with real tension, but knew when to let off with a good joke. This is a guy who knows how to tell a story. It's Eli Roth, right? No, he just produced it. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, the director was John Watts. Okay. Uh, this was actually his first horror movie that he's ever made. Um, While you finish your review, I'm going to pull him up and see if he's made anything since. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing more of what he makes. Uh, the special effects were fantastic. They were all practical. They were very realistic, even given the premise. Like, his transformation looked like an actual transformation. And while you didn't actually see him, like, kill any of the kids, you would see the aftermath. And, you know, the bones and the chunks and the viscera and all, all of the mess... Always leaving the legs behind. Like, that all looked great. Um, very visceral. Very real. Uh, on the whole, this was a great movie. I highly recommend it. It surprised me because I expected more of a horror comedy and got a solid horror movie with comedic moments. Yeah, it's not a comedy. It's yeah. very straight horror. Yeah. He's, uh, IMDb only gives this movie a 5.7. Yeah. It's much better than that. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um... This movie could have easily become a tedious one gimmick failure, and I was afraid that it would, which is why I've avoided it for so long. But it had a solid story, it was propelled by good actors, it had a good director, and it held me the entire time through. You know what he made? Huh? That Robocop remake movie that you Yeah, about yeah, that's case. right. Yeah. I, I saw that he, he was involved in that. Yeah, he directed it. Yeah. So then, then, since then he's only made Cop Car with Kevin Bacon yeah. and Spider Man Homecoming. Yeah, he's oh he, he's making the new Spider Man movie, which you know, that sense seems promising to me now. Well, like I said, about taking people that need to be making horror movies away to superheroes and shit. Yep. Well, I'm going to give Clown 9 out of 10. 
real skin, rip torn shower no. rapist impersonator. No, <laughs> no, no. Dom's personal. Oh, that's right. Do, Dom's Dom's personal use per, fem skin. Per, permanent fem skin. <laughs> If you guys don't know what a fucking femskin is, watch this fucking short documentary called Men in Rubber Mask on Netflix. I reviewed it and played some clips, and it is disturbing. Yeah, it is. I'm not one to judge. I'm not, to, I'm yeah, not one to kink We're not shame. shaming them, but it's weird. Not, not kink shaming on the rubber suits, but uh, it's a strange thing to look at from an outside perspective. So check it out. That's a, I, I'd say watch that before you even watch Clown. Watch Men yeah. in Rubber Mask. It's only 45 minutes long. Yeah. But uh, clown, clown was pretty awesome. I'm gonna, I'm gonna rewatch that fucker. My good movie is one that we've been looking forward to for a while now. It had so much hype that I was scared it would not be deserved. Audiences puking and fainting, and you know the deal. Yeah, people claim that kind of shit. While I don't know that anyone should have puked or fainted for this movie, it wasn't that bad in the in that kind of aspect. I still fucking loved it. 2016, written and directed by Julia DeCorno, starring Garantz Marillier and Ella Rumpf. French horror film, Ra. I'm, I'm excited to hear what, how it was. When a young vegetarian undergoes a carnivorous hazing ritual at vet school, an unbidden taste for meat begins to grow in her. Vegetarian horror. Needs to be a thing. It's about goddamn time. Justine follows her sister Alexia into some shitty raves, but she supports her even though she's kind of a twat. Apparently, to be a vet in France, you need to be doused in fake animal blood at this weird vet college. The initiation ritual is she has to eat a raw rabbit kidney, which her sister forces her to do. After she eats the kidney, she develops a rash and starts to change. It's about time we got some vegetarian horror. When passing by a car accident, she almost gets orgasmic hunger. At 14 years of vegetarian, there's nothing more terrifying to me other than something happening to my wife and kids than being forced to eat meat. <laughs> wow. Like, to be... Yeah. I know that's a very strange thing. Yeah. Most people listening are like, what? Yeah. But it's a very... I can, I might like this movie a lot more than some other people because of the fact because that... Because it resonates with she was, me. It yeah. does resonate with me, and it is terrifying. So, It is like a French version of excision. Wow. Really good acting, good minor characters, like the smoking nurse who gives Justine a story about dealing with her stupid fat patient. <laughs> I, love, I, I love French horror. It might be my favorite. France yeah. might be my favorite country to make horror movies, you know, with martyrs inside and everything. It's high tension, you know. I really didn't get the part of the extreme hazing at a veterinary school. <laughs> like, do you really think there's extreme hazing at a veter- veterinarian school? Doesn't seem like it would be. You know, any place where you gather young people together, there's a propensity for there to be douchebags and cliques. That's true, but come on, it's veterinary yeah, school. Yeah, <laughs> that's a... Uh... People that want to be a vet, it's yeah. because they love animals and they want to like help animals. Yeah, there's not. If you wanted to make money, you'd be a doctor. Yeah, that's the way I look at yeah. it. You go to med school instead yeah. of vet school if you're just a dick and you want money. Yeah. Yeah. There's a scene where a character is consistently throwing up hair, and it keeps going and going, pulling this hair out of her <laughs> like a mouth. drink log. Yeah, like a fucking over and over. Pulling it out <laughs> like, like the magic trick with the bandanas coming out of your mouth. Yes, exactly, but of hair. <laughs> it's a short scene, but to me, the most terrifying of the movie. And I'll give you background on why that is the most terrifying. Reason being, a young JD once banged a girl and then went to pee. Something didn't feel right in my pee hole. <laughs> so I had to investigate. Right. I did, began, did you put on your Sherlock Holmes hat and your magnifying glass? No, I was in sheer terror. <laughs> I began to pull out a long blonde hair that would not stop. Out of your urethra? In From my urethra. Uh, that I had fucked into my own dick. Right. In, in the throes of passion. <laughs> when I got to the end... And she of, wasn't even blonde. That was the weird part. <laughs> <laughs> when I got to the end of maybe two feet of hair, a mixture of blood... Pee and leftover semen. I felt like the kid in Stand By Me with the slug. 
Like I was about to fucking faint. Yeah. Almost pass out. I fucked a hair into my own dick. Jesus Christ. And it never stopped coming out when I was pulling it. Because I pulled it out slowly because it was maybe the worst pain I've ever been in. And I'm a deathmatch wrestler. Yeah. Get cut up by razor blades and barbed wire and stuff for fun. But this was probably the worst pain I've ever experienced. And this scene brought that all back to me. I hadn't thought about that in years. But this hair coming out of this mouth... And the way it was, she's gagging on it and stuff. It, like it was horrible, like painful when she was pulling this hair out. It reminded me of that time, and had a little flashback. I had a little flashback to where I was just a like, little bit of PTSD. I had, I had dude, I, I had like phantom pains in my dick. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> phantom dick pains. We've switched the rating system again. <laughs> There's a scene with a scissor mishap that completely changes the scope of the movie. I really fucking love this movie. It's equal parts awkward and depraved. Nice. I love awkward. Yeah. Awkward is my favorite thing. Even more than just straight horror and gore, the awkward... Be, the, like, Excision, I loved so much because of the awkward scene. Yeah, it's like 90 minutes of awkwardness. <laughs> yeah, and I fucking love awkward for some reason. It's just my favorite thing in, in all of movies. The dialogue, soundtrack, direction, it all builds to a weird story that I never expected, but after I saw it, I've been waiting for. Nice. The best part is, after Justine does something completely disgusting, Alexia, Alexa catches her and makes eye contact with her, and the guilt of Justine from what she has done and what her sister witnessed is on her face. It's so perfect. And the tears of Alexa in her in her eyes she's not crying but she's got welled up with tears conveys such intense emotions by both girls both of these girls did a tremendous job with their acting story keeps building and building culminates in a way that you will not expect at all IMDb gives it a 7.4 pretty strong for a modern day horror movie I'm gonna give it 9.2 of Dom's permanent femskins that are his own, that he owns, that he bought the, the, and wore. That are in my closet right now. <laughs> 9.2 of them are hanging in your closet. <laughs> Where's the rest? <laughs> All right, that's the good movie and the bad movie. So, uh, you know, while we were... I, I went and saw Alien Covenant with Michelle, who is... is is willing to suffer through bad movies. Willing to suffer through you wearing femskin. Yeah, to make is, yourself I, I was actually wearing the femskin while we were watching <laughs> Covenant. Like when they go to Burger King. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, I went to Burger King with her afterwards too. We went and walked around food for less for a while. Um, but she she was like she, she had she had not seen Prometheus, uh-huh. so I was kind of catching her up on what was going on and how like the aliens are before you to went be. there. Yeah, afterwards, after the movie, oh, after we she around, yeah. yeah, and you know how the aliens were uh, a weapon created by the engineers to like wipe out humanity. Um, this is what Ridley Scott talks about in interviews, at least. And she was like, "Well, that that's weird. That, you know, the the whole weapon, you know, them being a weapon thing. Because what happens? You just have a planet that's a planet that's overrun with, with xenomorphs afterwards. Yeah, and but no, because they can't breed sexually. So what would happen is they would kill off everything on the planet, and then they would eventually die off." And then she's like, yeah, but what if they found ways to lay eggs in each other? And then at first I was thinking, like, mega ultimate xenomorphs. But she's like, no, they'd come out retarded. Like, it would be like inbred aliens. (laughs) And so we came up with, like, the final inbred alien. And it's like the xenomorph's body with Biff's head. (laughs) And the mouth opens and a little Biff head comes out. (laughs) And and that's the (laughs) xenobiff. The xenobiff. Well, if I can remember it. That's going to be the graphic. I'm going to try to make a Xeno bit. <laughs> Holding down Rip Taylor. <laughs> Rip, okay, I'm writing this down. Rip Taylor, Xeno Biff. <laughs> All right, that's the good movie and the bad movie. We will be back with our list of the top five what the fuck did I just watch non-horror movies yeah. that end up being pretty horrific after this. Saturday, June 17th at 8 o'clock p.m. at the Galaxy Theater in Atascadero, California, Postmortem is joining forces with our friend Danny Foster to bring to you a screening of the one and only Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. But it's not just the screening. No, no it isn't, because we are going to have Leslie Vernon himself, Nathan Basil, in attendance, as well as director David Stevie, because they're going to be doing a live Q&A with us, a live podcast for Postmortem, and... 
They're going to be raising funds for their new movie, the next installment in the Behind the Mask franchise. But wait, there's more. We're going to have some raffles, we're going to have some information, some shit given away. There's going to be the Q&A, we're doing our live podcast, there's going to be a live horror art exhibit. Robbie and Shayla from Cherry Blossom Blossom Tattoos will be raffling off five hundred dollar horror tattoos. Five hundred dollar themed horror tattoos. I'm gonna have to enter that raffle. I'm gonna enter that raffle too. I'm gonna buy it. We're gonna have great giveaways from our sponsors: NECA, Trick or Treat Studios, Fright Rags, Dark Delicacies, London 1888, Captain Nemo Comics, Rocket Fizz, San Cal Professional Wrestling, and The Haunt and the Tascadero. And Satan himself. And Satan himself will also be sponsoring us and Ben. Each ticket will come with a signed print from the upcoming horror project. How much do these tickets cost? These tickets are only ten dollars American. Ten Amer ten American motherfucking dollars. Ten dollars you get to see behind the mask in the big screen. You get a chance to enter all these raffles. You get a live Q and A with the star and the director. You get to smell us. <laughs> you get to smell us and see us. You only get to hear us normally, but you get to smell, see, and possibly taste. That's one of the raffles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's only 230 seats to fill. We're going to fill them all. People are going to be coming from all around the globe to this event. Get your ass to a task You need to be one of them. Yeah. Catch a bus, a train. Fucking jump on the back of a giant condor. <laughs> <laughs> Ride a fucking ostrich. Yeah. Get here how you need to get here. Learn to teleport, motherfucker, then teach me. I'll let you in for free. <laughs> you, yeah, if, if you teach us how to teleport, you can come in for free. Absolutely. I'm sure that uh, they will be okay. I mean, technically, that. if you can teleport, can't you get anywhere for free? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, <laughs> well, the strategy is not really working out because now we're going to have 230 people who just teleported there and we're not going to make any money. For They're the all going to be Nightcrawler from X Men. <laughs> No, they won't. And we will see you guys June 17th. Yeah, be there. Be there. Be there, be there, be there. Why we're back! With the top five. What the fuck did I just watch movies? Movies that weren't necessarily horror movies, but ended up having some pretty horrific parts. As suggested by our listener Ken from Leisure Time Games, if you guys love you some Pokemans... Some magic, some D&D, things like that. Cthulhu Yahtzee. Check out Leisure Time Games. He also has a website where you can order stuff from, but uh, he hosted our first live show. We are very gracious for that. And Bought my Cthulhu Yahtzee from him. Dom got his Cthulhu Yahtzee from Leisure Time Games. Uh, I have not played it. You haven't? No, it's, it's the idol. Because it, it, like the shaker is the Cthulhu idol. Uh-huh. That's, just, that's just on my, my shelf with like my other cool shit. Why don't you bring it over and then you and Michelle and me and Aubrey can play? Yeah, you'll have to teach Yahtzee. me how because I don't know how to play Yahtzee. I can remember, maybe. I think Michelle knows how to play, too. I'm sure Aubrey does. She's a board gamer, yeah. so we play Scrabble like every night. Cthulhu Scrabble. <laughs> <That'd be awesome. laughs> <laughs> you only know, can spell... 20-point 20, 20 words. Summon <laughs> Yogg Sotha. <laughs> Why is there 24 Ys in this Scrabble bag? <laughs> <laughs> so, top five, what the fuck did I just watch? Want to fire this one off? I'll go first, yeah, that's fine. My number five is a little movie, as best described, a teenage hustler and a young man obsessed with an alien abduction cross paths, together discovering a horrible, liberating truth. Mysterious Skin. Ah, yeah. Is a fucking horrifying movie. Yeah, but not a horror movie. AIDS massages. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, this young man... Joseph Gordon-Levitt is a man whore. Yeah. Of the man-man variety. Yeah. And uh, experiences some very troubling things. <laughs> yeah. Especially when he gets beat. Yeah, he gets fucked up. Yeah, that's really bad. And then Richard Rail, the guy with the uh, the mustache. <laughs> Richard Rail. <laughs> R-E- R-I-E-H-L-E. He was on my top character actors yeah. list. Or on honorable mentions. His him, name is Dick Rail. In that, <laughs> Dick Rail. <laughs> in that movie, he's very creepy. Yeah, he is. As a John. Yeah. He's, yeah. A, he's and, a Dick John. And that movie is not what I expected it to be. Me neither. Like, like the fucking alien element yeah. and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I, I didn't know anything about that going into the movie. Me neither. I just heard it was fucking weird. Yeah. It was on a movie of top disturbing. You yeah. know, I was Google, like, back in the day, I've already seen all of them now, yeah. so it doesn't even matter, but... 
most disturbing movies, most disturbing documentaries, weirdest, you know what I mean? Yeah. And just watch some fucking way out shit. Yeah. And Mysterious Skin, man. If you guys haven't seen Mysterious Skin, you need to see it. Yeah. I I, I refused to watch it just because, not refused, but like I didn't have any interest in it because I thought it was just like a drama about Joseph Gordon-Levitt playing a man whore, you know? Yeah. That, that, that didn't do anything for me. And then a friend of mine whose taste I trust was like, no, dude, watch the movie. I'm not even going to tell you. Just watch the movie. Yeah. Like, All right, cool. And I'm glad I did, man. That was a good fucking movie. It was great. Yeah. Uh, my number five is a movie called I'm Still Here. Remember, maybe like eight, seven, eight years ago now, Joaquin Phoenix was like having this mental breakdown and was going to like walk away from acting. Oh, yeah, with rapper. his like, yeah, big old beard and yeah, stuff. And he, he was gained, like, gained a bunch of weight. Yeah. The whole thing was a work. Okay. Because um, he was making this mockumentary about him in an alternate universe having a mental breakdown. And so he was playing it in our world, Andy Kaufman style. But then the documentary that he made about it was fictional and took place in an alternate so it's reality. Good? It's really good. I thought he was just a fucking attention whore, and I had no, no. interest in that. He, 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 the and through the throughout the whole, and that's that's kind of what I thought about it too. And then again, a friend whose t- taste I trust was like, "No, check the movie out. Like, watch it. Like, and it's just about him fucking spiraling completely out of control into the absolute depths of madness, like." You know, hanging out with crack whores, and you know he pisses off his buddy, and his buddy shits on him in his sleep, and yeah, you know, it, it it ends with him like going off into the wild. Wow! And it's the whole time I'm watching it, like the movie just one ups itself every time. It's still on Netflix, isn't it? I think so. I think I've seen it. On yeah, there, yeah. And the whole time I'm watching it, I'm like, at first I'm like, this is stupid. Now this is interesting. What the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> and uh, yeah, really good movie. And the one of the things that made it good was a lot of the people's reactions to him were genuine reactions because he was out fucking with people Andy Kaufman style. Yeah. And then getting their gener- genuine reaction and none of them knew that it was a work until after the movie came out and he lost the weight, shaved the beard and went back to acting. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. And I'm going to watch that fucking weird ass movie. I'm yeah. going to watch that. I need to because I like shit like that. Yeah. You know, I love Andy Kaufman. The Andy Kaufman documentary, it's on YouTube, yeah. and it's so great. Yeah, I've seen that one. It's yeah. so good. So, All right, my number four. Give me a guilt boner. <laughs> you ever had a guilty boner? <laughs> Where something horrible is happening, but like... Yeah. It's good nudity, but in a way that's... Not so good. Not so good. Yeah. You get a guilt boner, a little... Like a guilt half chub. Because <laughs> if you're guilty, you don't get a full on like rock hard erection. You get like a little half chub. Unless going. you're Catholic. <laughs> yeah, <I guess. laughs> a normal Friday service at a fast food restaurant becomes interrupted by a police officer who claims an employee stole from a customer, but something more sinister is going on. Oh, I know which movie you're talking Compliance. about. Compliance. Yeah. It's a fucked Based up movie. Based on a true story. Yeah. An extremely fucked up movie, yeah. but Dreamy Walker. Yeah. Has some nice boobies. Yeah, yeah. Looks so, good. good with her clothes off. It's just a bad situation that she's in. <laughs> yeah. So basically, this movie is... It's not a horror movie. It's like a... They describe it as a crime drama and also a biography on Netflix. Yeah. I guess because it's on a true story. Yeah. But so, they're working at some like... Basically like a Chick-fil-A kind of place. Yeah. Some kind of chicken biscuit place or whatever. Yeah. Not like KFC, but like more of like a like sandwich. Like a chicken sandwich place. Yeah. yeah. And... uh this guy calls on the phone and talks to the talks to the manager and says that the cashier stole from someone and blah blah blah. Says he's a cop. Eventually leads to a strip search. It's all on the phone. Yeah. The cop never comes. It's all on the phone. Just by telling people stuff, you can get them to do stuff. It's basically the the moral of the story, yeah. which is fucking. And it's true that this happened. Yeah. And it happened like sixty times. Like the. It happened a bunch of times, not once. You right. know that? Yeah, and, and the movie was an amalgamation of everything that happened with... Yeah. yeah. And uh, so it leads to, you know, people being strip search, uh, people being raped. Yeah. Physically uh, violated. Forced, <laughs> sexually violated. Yeah. All by a voice on the phone saying it's a cop. Yeah. And you should do this, and you need to do this, and you need to do this, and you yeah. tell her this. Okay, well, if I have to come down there, blah, 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 and just... The whole movie, Compliance, I think it might still be on Netflix, but you need to watch this, guys. You yeah. need to watch this movie because it is very disturbing. Yeah, I, I was 
watching that was one of those movies where I almost turned it off because it was very uncomfortable. It, it was uncomfortable and it was making me angry because it was like because I was like, why the fuck are you yeah, doing this? What the fuck? But then hey, I why, realized that why is the the manager lady and all the other people involved doing this yeah. based on the voice? And why is this young girl going along with it and allowing it to happen? Right. I mean, and, and you get mad, and you're like, "Oh, this is so frustrating. This would never happen." But then you read about the actual crimes, yeah, and that's what and fucking it, happened. At the end of the movie, it said, "This isn't it yeah. is real, and it occurred." Yeah, and then it's like, I can't remember the number, but it's like, and it occurred sixty four times or something. Yeah. That made me like, <gasps> yeah, you know, like fuck, yeah. getting the goose flesh. Like, what the fuck? What is wrong with people? What yeah. is wrong with our society where people will allow this to happen and be participants in it and are that fucking stupid? Yep. But compliance, check it out. Yeah, really intense movie. Very intense. Yeah. Do it too. Um, my number four, one that we've mentioned actually recently on this show, but doesn't get a lot of love uh, from us, and it really stands as still one of my favorite movies. And I watched it recently, and it still holds up as entertaining. And that's Gummo. Yeah, that's on my honorable mentions. Yeah. It's definitely yeah. What the fuck? Did it's I just it's not a horror movie. It's just a slice of life movie, and it just so happens that there's some really fucked up people in this movie. Um, and Gummo also stands out for me. Uh, well, I'll talk about what it's about first for those of you who haven't seen it. It's sort of it's Harmony Corrin movie, which you know says a lot if you know who Harmony Corrin is because yeah. he makes weird ass shit. Um, but it's basically, there's this town called Xenia, Ohio, that's been wrecked by a hurricane, and all the people there are fucking backwards, and super white trash, and It's like, almost like a town of everyone being, like, inbred or something. Yeah. Like, there's, 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 like, physical things going on with yeah. the people looking very strange, but also acting very stupid. Yeah. Yeah. And Down Syndrome prostitutes, and, you know, the, the two main characters are, are kids who make their money by killing cats and selling them to the Chinese restaurant. And, yeah. You know, it, it, everything that happens. And then there's this weird skateboard bunny boy who is yeah. like the soul of the movie, but he's more of a symbol than an actual character. And there are these two sisters who are looking for their lost dog and end up almost getting molested. It's just all this fucked up shit that happens. And there's not a solid storyline through it so much as it's just a slice of these people's lives. But the reason this movie stuck with me... As, as hard as it did is not just because I saw it and it's fucked up but I've actually been to Xenia, Ohio yeah I, I went to I, I dated a girl from Ohio and we went back to visit her parents and she lived like an hour and a half away I'm like we gotta go to this town because I showed her Gummo and she's like yeah it's like that and so we went there and it's fucking like that there's there's a bar there called the Slippery Tit <laughs> I need to go yeah. did you get a t-shirt? no they, no, they didn't <laughs> This place is not friendly to tourists. They don't want you to wear their t-shirts. Oh. You, you, I went into the bar. With I my wore a slippery tit koozie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and I had long hair at the time, but I had my hair pulled back, and like I was a goth kid, but I dressed like conservatively, just like jeans and a t-shirt, you know, to like not start problems. But we walk in there, and we had all of our teeth, so that was the first sign that something was wrong. <laughs> and like I, we go to the bar, and I order a drink, and the bartender looks at me. And he goes back to the behind the bar and he comes back with a fucking jar full of pickled hard boiled eggs. Plum, puts it on the bar in front of me. Plum, unscrews the lid. And just looks at me. And I'm like, uh, do I need to eat the egg before I can get a drink? And he still is just looking at me. So I reach into the jar and I take out a fucking disgusting smelling pickled hard boiled egg and I eat the thing. And he puts the lid back on the jar, puts it back, and gets me my drink. That's very strange. It's a fucking weird town. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And, eat and, the egg. Yeah. One of us. <laughs> eat the egg. One of us. And my IQ dropped like 30 points that day, and now I'm, I'm one of them. And as we were after, like, we had our one drink, and we left the bar, and my ex-girlfriend was like, I, they probably would have killed us if you didn't eat that egg. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, gummo. F- fucked up movie again based on a real place and very accurate to it <laughs> my number three I believe I brought up on top five clowns um, and multiple times and I'm a big fan of it as are we all a movie that's very near and dear to my heart not a horror movie but horrific there's several scenes in this movie some involve clowns truck drivers <laughs> Rednecks. <laughs> Very strange things. When an eccentric man-child 
gets his beloved bike stolen in broad daylight, he sets across the U.S. on the adventure of his life <laughs> in a little movie called Pee-wee's Big Adventure. That's a fucked up movie. It's got some horror elements. Dude. Yeah, it does. Like, and you don't think about that. Like, even as a kid, I remember watching it and loving it. But like, okay, so you got the clowns mm-hmm. with the cutting out the bike industry. You have Large Marge. Scary. You have the guy in the diner talking about Large Marge. Total horror. Ghost act, story right? shit, yeah. You also have, when he does the interrogation in the basement, what about you, Wacky Larry, or Amazing Larry? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and he's got the light on him, and ha, 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 just going crazy. And, yeah. and when he sees the psychic, there's so many horror elements to that movie. I guess it's just Tim Burton, but... And that's like Tim Burton, like, that's one of his best movies. It is his yeah, best it's, movie. It is that, by that far... Beetlejuice, I think, are probably I think it's Pee-wee's Big Adventure is the best. Beetlejuice, number two. But Pee-wee's Big Adventure, I fucking love that, yeah. that movie. And you can show that to anyone and yeah. they'll like it. Yeah. Anyone. Kids, adults, it doesn't matter. If you guys are going, what the fuck? Yeah. And number three... Pee-wee, fuck Pee-wee, blah, blah, blah. When you're listening to this and you haven't seen it for years, go back and watch it. Because if you're a fan of this show and our humor and horror movies and stuff, yeah. just watch it with an open mind yeah. from start to finish. Put your fucking phone away and watch it and sit down and enjoy it. And you'll love you some Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Yeah, it's... I gotta show that one to, to, to the kids, for sure. Oh, like, you do? They, they, I don't even think they know who Pee-wee is. And then, yeah, you gotta show that one first and then you can go down the Pee-wee rabbit hole and see... Some of the others, you know. Big Top Pee Wee. Even the the last one that came out on Netflix is pretty good. Uh, it's Pee Wee's something, Pee Wee's Man Stripper Vacation. <laughs> Man Stripper Vacation. Some, something like that. I actually uh, uh, banged Pee Wee's Big Holiday. I, I banged a girl that was in Big Top Pee Wee. Really? Yeah, she, she was a little kid when she was in the movie. She was an adult when I banged her. <laughs> she played large <laughs> Yeah, uh, she, was, she was one of the little kids in Big Top Pee Wee, and, and that, that was her, her one <laughs> film role. That's awesome. Yeah. So I, I had to go there. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, you'd never be able to tell me the story. Yeah, right now. <laughs> now, now, now I am one degree of separation. You're like, you know what? <laughs> you know what? One day I'm going to have a podcast. Yeah. I'm going to tell my friend about this very moment. <laughs> Here and now. <laughs> All right. My number three. Jan Schwankmeyer's Alice. Have you seen this? Jan Schwankmeyer is the uh, stop motion and claymation dude who trained the guys who made all of the tool videos uh, from their early albums. Like that weird kind of. Is it like Alice in Wonderland? It's Alice in Wonderland, but it's Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland also has some horror elements too, if you really break it down. Yeah. It's. But Jan Schwankmeyer's Alice is like a combination of Alice in Wonderland, Alice for the Looking Glass, and something else. And from his perspective, the whole thing is happening in Alice's crazy drug addled mind because she has gone insane and has been Is Alice up. through the looking glass the one about the actual girl who like does drugs and stuff and have that there's some kind of Alice thing going on that's like almost like a biography book but it's also like Alice in Wonderland. No, no, that's not through the looking glass. The through the looking glass is the sequel to Alice in Wonderland that, oh, that, okay. that Lewis Carroll wrote. There's some kind of Alice thing that's like that though to where it's like a this real girl who was like spun out and stuff, and it's like her life story, but it's also Alice in Wonderland. Are you talking about American McGee's Alice, the video game? No. Okay. No. I that, that video game's pretty cool. That but video there's, game's awesome. There's some book that my ex used to read that I that uh, was some kind of like Alice in Wonderland. Oh, go meets, ask Alice. Is that what it's called? No, that's like Jefferson Airplane song. Oh. <laughs> okay. I don't know. But. Continue with yeah. it. <laughs> so, Jan Schwankmeyer's Alice is, is, is... It's Alice in Wonderland, and you'll recognize it as that, but it's got his... I like saying that, Jan Schwankmeyer. Jan Schwankmeyer. Uh, he, he has also made some uh, uh, horror movies. Um, I believe he's he's from Finland or, or Sweden or something like that. But his style is... He takes real people and mixes them with stop motion, but he also stop motions the people. And everything has this really weird, disjointed... Very nightmarish quality to it, and uh, you know he deals with demon summoning and and you know all of this really really fucked up shit all under the Alice in Wonderland banner with these giant puppets and all of this stuff and stop motion is the scariest thing yeah and you you watch it and it's just and and oh and he uses like taxidermied animals and like stop motions them and stuff and the whole thing is just like when you're done watching it not only you're like you. 
what the fuck did I watch? But you feel like you've woken up from a nightmare. Wow, that's yeah. a good endorsement. And uh, we we used to actually watch this movie. We would do DXM and watch this movie, so that would give us give it even more of a fucked up feel to yeah. it because you'd be all physically disassociated from your body watching this crazy movie. I recommend anything by Jan Schwankmeier and anything by the Brothers Quay. They're another group of stop motion animators who I recommend just sitting in a room and saying Jan Schmunkmeier Jan Schmunkmeier <laughs> over and over yeah. <laughs> um, but check it out it's very good stuff very weird stuff and uh, it, it touches something like deep inside your psyche I want to see that I've never heard of that yeah. or even see, I've never even heard of that guy yeah so yeah I'm going to check that check out, out for sure stuff. All, every, everything that he's ever done has been good he's, he did a, a version of Faust that was good he did a, a lot of stuff we need to start making notes while we're doing the show of like I tell you something, you're like, oh, I want to watch that yeah. tonight. And then you never watch it, and you tell me, and I never watch yeah. it. You know what I mean? We need to start making some notes. Yeah. So. Number three, right? Number two now. Number two. Number two for me. The lives of several individuals intertwine as they go about their lives in their own unique ways. Engaging in act society as a whole might find disturbing in a desperate search for human connection. 1998. Todd Salant's Happiness. <laughs> Fuck. That's a fucked up movie. It's not a horror movie, no, but what? it gets fucking horrific. It gets dark as fuck. That would probably be... It starts dark as fuck. It does. <laughs> and, you know, we talk about, like, our top... Oh, Dom and JD's top 100 horror movies and stuff like that, which we need to update, because we've seen some shit since we put mm. that out. We need to... That needs to be, like, a growing, continuous list. We should make a bottom 100 movies, too, of, like, movies that people shouldn't watch. <laughs> I think it's, uh, bottom 100 is pretty rough to make. <laughs> yeah. But, and to rank. Yeah. How could you rank that? So, happiness, like I said, we talk about our top 100 and everything. Happiness would be one of my top 10 movies of all time of any genre. Wow. I love this fucking movie. Like I said, awkward. Yeah. John Lovitz. I love John Lovitz awkward. in that movie. John Lovitz is fucking awkward. The main girl is fucking awkward. Joy. Yeah. She's awkward. The the grandma. Yeah. Is fucking awkward. The coach. The dad. Yeah. The co- This is a movie full of awkward characters <laughs> in awkward situations. <laughs> the little boy who doesn't know what coming is. <laughs> yeah. And eventually. He, he learns. He learns. And so does the dog. It's the grand finale or the money shot, if you will, of the movie. <laughs> Literally. But happiness, it goes dark places. There's molestation. There's violence. There's uh, <laughs> fucking, uh, why can't I remember his name? Oh, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Yeah. In that movie is another level of awkward. Yeah. On the phone. Yeah. He calls people randomly in the phone book while he's being off. And then one of them happens to be his neighbor, <laughs> but she's into it. Yeah, and this and then the the Russian guy, the with the guitar. Like, there's so much shit going on in this movie. It's a great fucking movie. It's only two. It's two hours and fourteen minutes, which may seem like a long movie, but there's so many interconnected stories to where these characters have their own story, but they also mildly talk. With one, with right. one another, it's not know. quite an anthology movie, but like it almost, it's like a, yeah, it's, it's almost it's like an anthology, but there is some interweaving of yeah. these characters at some points. Yeah, a lot of them cross paths. It's kind of like Pulp Fiction in that. Yeah, way, where it's like different stories of the same universe yeah. where these characters could walk down the street yeah. or p- talk to each other. But where Pulp Fiction was like, oh, look at this! All this stuff's crossing over. Happiness is more subtle with it. Yeah, happiness is. One of the most disturbing movies I've ever seen. Yep. And I've seen the Serbian film and Roberto Tate Sacrifice and everything like that. Because happiness comes from a place of disturbing and practical. Pra- disturbing in the way that, like, okay, like a Serbian film, super disturbing, right? Right. Roberto Tate Sacrifice, super disturbing. But also but stylized, not, also, not concrete. Not just stylized, but. Happiness is more plausible, like, a lot of these things could happen in most of our lives. Could meet, you could meet this character. Oh, yeah, it's, it's very real. You're probably not going to meet Hank Skinny tomorrow when you're at the grocery store. No. But you might meet any one of these characters. Yeah, the, the you probably store. have met them before. And you probably have. Yeah. And if you guys haven't seen fucking Happiness, check that out. I mean, I recommend it before you even watch another horror movie, because yeah. it is that fucking... Unless movie. you're, like... Chronically depressed, then maybe you shouldn't watch Happiness. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you may kill yourself. Yeah, yep. yeah. The, the the title the title 
is not accurate for the movie. <laughs> John Lovett's underrated serious actor. He was so good. He was and, great. And he I, needs to do more of that. Yeah, I, I won't give away how his scene ends, but it's I love the critic. Fuck. Yeah, it's very shocking. Yeah, and I loved it. The critic was uh, great too. Yeah, yeah. He's the beginning of the movie. Yeah, yeah. And R.I.P. Philip Seymour Hoffman. Yeah, great guy, fucking guy actor who played awkward very well. Awkward yes. and creepy. <laughs> he, he was like the serious man's Chris Farley. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> serious Farley. All right, my number two is one of the more disturbing movies I've ever seen. And again, kind of concrete and real. Uh, a little movie called Spanking the Monkey. From Is that good? <sighs> I've heard about it and I've never uh, seen it. It's, yeah, it's good. It's effective. Uh, it's about this dude named Raymond who uh, is kind of failing at life. And his uh, mom had him when she was very young. So they're only, like, he's an adult, but, like, they're only, like, maybe 18 years apart. Maybe, yeah. Maybe less than that. Yeah. And his dad is a salesman or something like that and is out on the road all the time and, and isn't home. And his mom gets in an accident and breaks both of her arms. So he has to go back to his parents' house, leave his shitty life, go back to his parents' house, and take care of his mom while the dad's off working and earning money. And uh, he has a problem that every time he tries to beat off, something stops him. Either his mom, you know, is you know, ringing the bell because she needs help with something, or like the dog staring at him, or you know, whatever. Like several times he tries to beat off, can't do it. And like, there's he sees women that he's attracted to, and sees you know, like the centerfold in the magazine, and he's just getting like more and more sexually frustrated, and more and more fucked up, and angry about it, and. Eventually, he's giving his mother a shower, and they fuck. And he has to deal with the mental breakdown that happens after you've had sex with your own mother. To lose your virginity. <laughs> I don't think he lost his virginity to his mother, because he was already an adult. They didn't, they didn't imply that. But, oh, okay. But, he, yeah, he, he fucked his own mom, and she was into it. Because she wasn't getting any either because his dad was always out on the road. That's very disturbing. Yeah, very fucking I do disturbing. want to see that movie, though, because I have heard good things. Yeah, it's very, very well acted. Very, very well made. Very, very tense. Very intense. It just, you feel fucking nasty after you watch it. Yeah. You know, it's it's like Requiem for a Dream, where after you watch it, you're like, oh, God, I need a fucking shower. Yeah. Uh, and, and, yeah, you know, his mom is a little bit hot. You know, she's got some, like, some MILF stuff going on. But, you know, that's his mom. That's his mom. <laughs> You're it's trying okay. to justify it's, 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 it. Oh, no, it's okay so, for me to say so that, already that in this episode, hot. Already in this episode, you've outed yourself for owning and wearing femskins. Yeah. And also now attracted to motherly figures and justifying mother-son incest. Yeah. That's that's where you're at right now. That's where I, that's that's my life. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I can't beat off. <laughs> you can't I, be I, I've, spanking I've, the you know, monkey. I've had new roommates for two months now. And every time I try to beat off, Jamie's at my door. You know, hey, what's going on? What's going on? <laughs> and he doesn't knock. He just opens. Yeah, he just it. It's opens almost it. like he wants. Yeah, to and he you. usually walks in wearing a clown suit. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> he walks in wearing his fem skin. Yeah, his skin too. But his fem skin is a clown. <laughs> it's like it's, female clown yeah, fem skin. Yeah, it's like going to be it's a, like Harley Quinn. <laughs> once the fem skins are not enough, they're going to be theme, themed like that. Yeah. Once these guys with the fem skins, they can't get off with them anymore. They become jaded. <laughs> they become desensitized <laughs> to the fem skin. Now you got to go with themes. It's like, be different like aliens and shit and different <laughs> well, you know it's like it's like they you have a biff xenomorph <laughs> biff biffomorph femsk, Zeno the biff alien femsk. queen biff i mean femsk. i guess that is the natural progression because you know they had dead flashlights yeah and then they had like the monster the twerking butt the twerking butt and you know the monster flashlights and then there's the fucking pneumatic head yeah it gives you <laughs> Building brighter futures. Yeah. <laughs> Through sex toys. <laughs> yeah. To a punishing 120 cycles per minute. <laughs> I don't want to punish my dick with anything. <laughs> Only when it's bad. <laughs> when it's naughty. <laughs> when it's naughty, I like to punish it. <laughs> All right. My number one. A troubled and perverted family finds their lives intruded by a mysterious stranger who seems to help find a balance in their disturbing natures. I know what movie you're talking about. 
Or you could also say, a father who's a failed former television reporter <laughs> tries to mount a documentary about violence and sex among youths. He proceeds to have sex with his daughter, who is now a prostitute, and films his son being humiliated and hit by classmates. Q, a perfect stranger, somehow gets involved and enters the bizarre family, whose son beats his mom, who in turn is also a prostitute and a heroin addict. And a and, lactator. And a lactator. Just like you said, Takashi Miike. Yep. With the bizarre yep. visitor Q. It's on my honorable mentions. The only reason it wasn't my number one is because I've talked about it too much on this show. I have talked about so. it as well. I've <laughs> talked about it as well. Even in death, you, you shit, shit on me. me. <laughs> That's the best line yeah. in any movie ever. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's a it, it's a fantastic movie. Uh, and Takashi Miike. Uh, the other reason it was on my honorable mention is it's, like Takashi Miike. Like it would be more shocking if he made a movie that wasn't weird. He's like number one, just him. Yeah, his career. Takashi Mike. So let me let me briefly read you some of the IMDb parents guide. To warn, <laughs> warn the parents about the content of these movies. So, with the IMDb Parents Guide of Visitor Q, they break it down into categories. You have to scroll. <laughs> There's a lot. Sex and nudity. The movie opens with a sex scene. Breasts are visible. Flashes of a penis are seen as well. However, most genitals are blurred out. A man has sex with a dead body. Due to rigor mortis, his penis gets stuck and there's a protracted scene where he tries to remove it. A rape scene. We see breath from afar. Female genitalia. A dead female body is seen a few times. Breasts are visible. A woman squeezes and her breasts squeeze so they lactate. She later is seen breastfeeding two people. Yep. A woman is seen naked from behind, sitting on a bed. A man enters the scene, naked but genitals are blurred. He kneels in front of her and she hits him, at his request, with a belt. <laughs> a woman is seen in her underwear a couple of times. Yeah. I don't know why they need to put that. A woman is seen in her underwear a couple of times. <gasps> in the movie Visitor yeah. Q. <laughs> a woman smells a man's clothes penis to determine if he has had sex. <laughs> Violence and gore. They, they didn't mention a man has sex with his own daughter. They didn't put that on the on on there. Yeah. On the parents' guide. Yeah. Maybe the parents are. <laughs> Maybe that's a guide to parenting. <laughs> <laughs> Violence and gore. A man and woman kill three teenage boys. There is some blood. A man beats up several people with a rock. We see them bandaged and rather bruised faces. A boy beats his mother with a whip. Most of the attacks aren't shown, although we see marks on her back afterwards. A boy is shortly seen being beaten up and urinated on as a victim of bullying. A rape soon, parentheses, see sex and nudity, comes to a stop when the woman is strangled to death. There's talk of cutting up a dead body. We later see people performing the act, but the body itself is not seen. We do hear the cutters talking about the blood. Profanity. <laughs> a few instances of explicit sexual dialogue, particularly during a graphic scene of necrophilia and incest. Yeah. Strong language otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> Alcohol, drugs, slash smoking. A woman injects heroin into her arm. A woman injects a man with heroin. One character smokes and a few of them drink. That's on the parents' guide. Huh? Frightening and intense scenes. Strong sex, violence... Sexual violence recommended for eighteen plus. Visitor Q is one of the weirdest fucking movies I've ever seen. I love it to death. Even in death, you shit on me. <laughs> the dad's overacting in that yeah, whole part is so just intense. The best, the best part of it. Yeah. You guys check out Visitor Q. Check out anything Takashi Miike makes. Really, just sit yeah. down and watch his library if you really want to fry your own brain. Yeah, I love his movies, but Visitor Q just has the whole special place in my heart. For all the reasons I just described in the parents' guide. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. What a weird fucking movie. Yeah. And probably his most fucked up movie. I mean, he has movies yeah. that, are, that are close to that fucked he up. He has movies that are more physically, like, gore. Like, yeah. Like, more... Ichi the Killer and things like that. Things where like that. Where people get kicked in half and shit. Yeah. He's got that kind of stuff. But this is the more disturbing, like, yeah. this is not right kind of yeah. disturbing. Not just, like, uh, gore and, right. and torture and shit like that. So, The man is an artist. An artist of the fucked up. Oh. My number one is actually my favorite movie of all time. Wow. Yeah. Not even a horror movie. It's wow. my favorite movie of all time. And that is a movie from, I believe, 1968, written by Jack Nicholson and directed by Bob Raffleson, who directed Easy Rider, starring the monkeys. And it's called Head. That's your favorite movie? That's you my talked favorite about this. Movie of Maybe all time. once you've talked about yeah. it. 
It is. It, it ruined the. It is the movie that ruined the monkey's career. Yeah, and they did it intentionally because they hated what they were doing. Yeah. So, this movie starts out. You know, like it, I'm sure everyone's seen an episode of Hey Hey with the Monkeys. You know, the TV show that they did in the '60s, where it was sort of just like random funny skits tied together of them being on tour and they would have little weird adventures and stuff like that. And it was all cutesy and funny and for the little kids and shit like that. Totally safe. This movie took that entire convention and turned it on its fucking ear. And the whole thing is a massive send-up of uh, popular culture and consumerism and artists selling out. And it's still just as, as relevant today as it was when they made it in 1968. And the whole thing is just fucking dark, and it's just layers and layers and layers of darkness. They die multiple times throughout the movie. The movie begins with them dying. Um, yeah, they end up in alternate realities. They, it's just, it's, it's fucking nuts. And it's like the first time you sit through it, you're like, "What the fuck did I just watch?" And yeah. then you watch it four or five more times, and you're like, "Oh shit, this is absolutely brilliant." But when the movie came out, it was so dark that children were leaving the theater crying. And parents were demanding their money back. And someone tried to sue the production company for making a monkey's movie that was this dark. Um, but they couldn't name anything. Hey, hey, with the monkeys. Yeah, that song doesn't even appear in the movie. Around. They, something about monkeys. <laughs> monkey, we monkey, like monkey around. Our own shit and beat off. <laughs> yeah. They, they don't even use that song in the movie. Like, that's how much they wanted to disassociate themselves from what they were doing. And the, the music that they actually make for it is good. It's like, it's, it's all a play on the Beatles, but like, it's all like very psychedelic and like fucked up. And it's, it's the monkeys, but it's, again, just they go dark. I thought the monkeys really. didn't play any of their own instruments. They really. learned towards the end of their career. Oh, okay. um, only Mike Nesmith actually played guitar and uh, the rest of them uh, uh, learned as they went on so that they could tour. Um, but yeah, I, I very, very much recommend this movie for anyone who's interested in, in pop culture or in the concept of like selling out and, and you know, people over marketing and themselves. horrific, huh? Not a horror and movie, but horrific scenes. The, the thing about it is there's nothing about it that is explicitly horrific. Yeah. There's nothing that you can put your finger on and say, that's disgusting. It's just the way that you feel afterwards and the way that, that it just psychologically beats you down and like jumps from scene to scene. And they're playing everything for laughs, so it's comedy. But then there's like a sinister layer underneath it. It's something that only Jack Nicholson and Bob Raffleson could pull off. Yeah. With with their madness. And they were apparently on a shitload of LSD when they were making this movie too. Um Here's Johnny. Yeah, and it, it comes across. You know, th- and there's like these weird random scenes like Frank Zappa's in the movie and he's got a talking cow, but it, like they never go back to it. But it's funny when it happens. Uh, there, there's a part where they're in the desert and this guy like this dressed in full, you know, Arab headdress and all that rides up to them and goes, Psst, and they lean a little closer and he goes, Psst, and they subtitle, Psst, and then he just rides <laughs> off on his horse. <laughs> there, there is a lot of just random laughs, but there's this, this whole undercurrent of just like, utter disgust at the state of popular culture yeah. that goes underneath it. And, and it's it's a great movie. Honorable and, man. And they called the movie Head because if they ever got around to making a sequel, they wanted to advertise it as from the directors of the movie that gave... or from the directors that gave you Head. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Honorable mentions. Storytelling. Another Todd Salons. Have you seen Storytelling? I have not. You never seen storytelling? Mm-hmm. It's an anthology. It's fucking weird. It's Todd Salons, mm-hmm. director of Happiness. Yeah. There is a scene where you know Tully from Kids. Tully. Yeah. He plays. Oh, fuck! I don't want to get their the disability name wrong. Maybe That's a kid with a weird voice, right? He's the main kid that yeah. gives everyone AIDS. Yeah. Um. He plays. Is it MS? I I don't. I'm not really sure what the disability he has. It's. I think it's MS. I think or is it it's cerebral palsy? palsy? It might be cerebral palsy, but there's a, he gets mounted and rode like by a girl, uh-huh. and he's like, hey. and, he's just, <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a scene where I think it's her teacher, the the same girl. Uh, fuck, what's that girl's name? She's in the movie Cruel Intentions, but she's not Buffy. She's the black haired girl, but she there's a scene where her her. Uh, her teacher, I believe it's her teacher, is a black guy, and he bangs her, and demands that she call him the N word over and over, 
and say F me N word. Wow. I'm not gonna say it, but yeah, storytelling is a is a weird movie. You need to see that shit. I've never even heard of it. Samuel Blair, that's her name. Yeah. Um yeah, you need you need to see the fucking storytelling. Little Children, another movie that we talked about that you said you're gonna watch that you need to see, but yeah, I haven't gotten Jackie Earl Haley, Little Children, fucking it was in my castrations list, and it's a fucking great movie. Naked Lunch, definitely a what, what the fuck did I just watch movie. Have you seen Running Scared with Paul Walker? Yeah. It's like a fairy tale. Yeah. And that's a weird fucking movie, you know? Yeah. And, and it's good, and it, but it's got some horror elements with those pedophiles with their tapes and shit. That's like a horror, horror element, you know, of a non-horror movie. Pan's Labyrinth. Yeah, going in to see that. That's definitely, definitely a fucked up movie. Yeah, makes you makes you feel horror even though it's not. Clockwork Orange. Yeah, I was kind of classic. I guess it's more of an ex- like exploitation drama though. I know that's what I'm saying. It's yeah. not a horror it's movie, really but horror. there is some horrific things happening. Yeah, There's torture. Yeah, lots of torture. Home invasion, rape, torture, violence. Beatings. It's, it has everything a horror movie would have. Yeah. We need to talk about Kevin. Another one that's on your list of movies that you need to watch. Yeah. You fucker. Before they take it off Netflix. <laughs> I'm getting angry about these movies you haven't seen. <laughs> you have to just email me this list. <laughs> Gummo. Johnny Got His Gun. Have you seen that? That's a great movie. That's a weird... It's it's kind of boring, but it's very disturbing. Yeah. Definitely horror. Two movies that everyone has seen, but they're a fucking horror movie. And you don't realize it until after you reflect back. But both by a character by the name of Dr. Jones... Indiana Jones. Yeah. Raiders of the Lost Ark and Temple of Doom. Yeah. Very horror horror elements in yeah, that movie. Very much that so. is not a horror movie. Yeah. Melting Nazis, hearts getting ripped out. Yeah. Kali Ma, motherfuckers. Prisoners. You seen Prisoners? I don't know. Yeah, I've seen Prisoners. That doesn't ring a bell. Check that out. Little Nemo Adventures in Dreamland. The game on Oh on yeah, Nintendo. the anime, yeah. Yeah. The yeah. the game on Nintendo was really good. Yeah. But the the actual movie it's based on is very strange. Yeah, it's very dark. Eraserhead, which might be billed as a horror movie, but it's one of the weirdest things yeah, I've ever it's seen. It's like an abstract art film. And my last one, Begotten. Yeah. Another abstract art film that yes. gets lumped into horror because no one else knows what to call it. When you call a movie black and white, you think of like black and white and gray. No, this yeah. movie is black, black and white. And There's white. only <laughs> black and only absolute black and absolute white. Yeah. And, and very, very strange. good sound design. Yeah, strange fucking movie. Yeah. Uh my honorable mentions that were not previously mentioned. Uh Rubber. Yeah. The movie about the sentient tire that goes on a killing spree. <laughs> Very strange. It's just a, it, 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 while while there are horror elements with the tire going on the killing spree and all that, that's not like what it is. It's the whole thing is like just ultimate nihilism. Yeah, you know, and like the whole like it's a movie within a movie, but the people aren't actually watching a movie. They're forced to watch it with binoculars from a hill as they all slowly start to die off. Really fucking weird movie. Uh, Brazil, Terry Gilliam's film. Yeah, that's actually, it holds up. That's old, yeah. and it still holds up, yeah. yeah. Terry Gilliam's one of my favorite directors. Um, he's he's made some questionable movies, but he's also made some of the greatest fucking weird movies ever made. Yeah. Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas being one, uh, another one of my ultimate favorite films. Yeah. But, uh, that also could, there's some horror elements in that, too. Oh, yeah. Well, it that could have made the Thompson's list. Brain, you know? Yeah, Thompson's brain, That could have made the list, yeah. too, yeah. Um, Sit down, you weird motherfucker. <laughs> Clean your shorts, goddammit. Clean your shorts like a big boy. <laughs> <laughs> I am Ahab. Vulgar. Yeah. Clown rape. Clown rape. <laughs> yeah, fucking Dante from Clerks playing. <laughs> I'm going to make hate to you, boy. <laughs> I'm going to make hate to you, clown. That's what it That's is. Line. Yeah. But I love the use of I'm going to make hate to you instead of love because there's no love going into this. No, no, not at all. That's... <laughs> That is a pure act. We're not making love. We're making hate. Garbage Pail Kids, the movie. Very strange. Very fucking strange movie. Uh, and if you go back and watch it now, it doesn't get any more normal. <laughs> it's. I don't know what the fuck they were thinking when they made that, or what they were on, really. Uh, that That's one of the products of, like, cocaine and marketing. Yeah. And a uh, movie that I know of, thanks to you, Chocolate Strawberry Vanilla. That... That is a fucking weird... I think it's Strawberry Chocolate... Who cares? It's three... It's Neapolitan. Neapolitan the movie. Yeah. Chocolate Wh- Strawberry Vanilla. I just pulled it up on IMDb. Uh, okay. A guy that is similar to Wickus. Yeah. 
and an ice cream man that cuts his own video log, but it's only just on his camera. Yeah, just for him. Because he's very stupid. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, I love that movie. I saw that randomly on Amazon Prime. You know we talk about the shittiness of Amazon Prime. Yeah. I saw that, and I'm like, oh, maybe I'll give this a try. I watched it. I was fucking enraptured to it, you know? That movie is one of the reasons I still occasionally watch things on Amazon Prime. Because of things, little hidden gems like yeah. that, huh? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Fuck that's... you, Amazon Prime. That's what I have. All right. That's it for honorable mentions. Thanks again, Ken, for sending in your list. Oh, what's his Oh, list? I got to read his list. Let me just pull that up. Why don't you just talk for a minute so I have some time here? <laughs> blah, 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 blah. My I name's guess, Dom, <laughs> and I'm talking. I guess it's a good thing that we said thanks again, Ken, for... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> for sending in your list. Oh, wait. I got sending read. in your list that we didn't read because we're assholes. <laughs> <laughs> and once again, you guys, send in your list. Postmortemshow at gmail.com. If you don't have a list, just... Email us. Say hi. Say yeah. you enjoy the show. Send us your Tell idea. us to fuck off. Yeah. Tell, <laughs> you're like, God damn it, I like Alien Covenant. You don't have any taste. <laughs> fuck you, Dom. Yeah, that's right. Go, go, put on, go put on your fem skin. Fuck and... you and the fem skin you rode in on. <laughs> All right. This is what Ken says. Top five, what the fuck did I just watch? Movies that after reflection were more horror, even though you didn't go into it thinking so. His number five, Heavy Metal. Yeah. It's got some horror elements it to it. Some of all evil. It's got some adventure, music, softcore porn. He says, you can walk away realizing the story about exactly what Lochnar said it was. TNA mixed with blood and violence, just like a good horror movie should be. Yeah. Which is true. Uh, Hand Over Fist is my favorite se- sequence in that. The guy that's giving the uh, the testimony about the, the guy who's supposedly a hero, but they're in court. and what about the preschool prostitution ring? And as he gets angrier and angrier, he gets bigger and bigger. <laughs> I haven't seen it for... I probably haven't seen a heavy metal since I was like 10. Uh, Number four, The Terminator. Yeah, sci-fi does not preclude it from the horror genre, but what he says is an unstoppable force hell-bent on murder. Wherever it goes, everyone dies. It's the creature feature at the finest, minus the rubber suit. So Yeah. Pretty much like Jason Voorhees. Yeah. But it's Arnold. He's he's a he's definitely a, a juggernaut slasher, you, a juggernaut shooter, I guess. In this case, here's one that I don't really agree with because I view it as based. It was kind of build horror, but number three, Gremlins, produced by Steven Spielberg, who did ET and Raiders of the Lost Ark, ought to be fun for the whole family. Let's take the kids. It'll be fun. They're cute. They're cuddly. Some kid is the star. Family fun for all, right? Yeah, until Grandma is straight up murdered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it wasn't billed as a horror movie when it came out, though. It was billed as, like, a, you know... Fantasy yeah, or and whatever. It, and there was nothing... I mean, other than, than, like, creature features, there was really nothing like it. Because yeah. it started that trend that gave us munchies and ghoulies and critters and yeah. all those other... I love Gremlins. Tiny puppet movies. Number two, Attack on Titan live action... That's a oh fuck man that movie's good. I've never seen it. It's I I've never seen. I don't even know what. See, it says it's based on a manga and an anime, but I never watched any of those really. I mean, I've watched La Blue Girl. Uh (laughs) That's about it. Legend of the Overfiend. (laughs) That's Um, about all I've ever seen. So he says you might have read the manga. Maybe you watched the anime. Go ahead and watch the movie because why not? It's based on a silly manga. What could possibly be so bad? Yeah, all the animated gore and violence. There it is, but it's live action. Yeah. Exactly like it's Cartoon Cousin, but with the buckets and buckets of blood and gore, makes you rethink the whole Attack on Titan cartoon. Yeah, because well, they're, they're fighting titans, like from Greek mythology, like giant humanoid monsters. And they have I to, thought it was some kind of space shit. No, they have to. Well, it's in the fu- it's in like a weird kind of futuristic setting. Oh, okay. But, and, and they have like, you know, futuristic weapons and stuff, so it's kind of sci fi. But the, yeah, the the monsters are very humanoid, and they have to fuck them up to kill them. And in the anime and in the manga, it's you know, I mean, it's it's all drawn, so it doesn't seem that bad. Is it manga like just like comic book? It's a comic book, yeah, but it's, it's generally black and white. Um, so it's, oh, okay. A, but with Attack on Titan, the live action movie, man, they they did not pull any punches, and there's a lot of fucking like. Imagine like Attack of the Fifty Foot Woman or King Kong or something like that, but with just fucking gallons of blood. From the from the Titan? Yeah. Oh. Okay. And from the people getting killed, too. Yeah. 
Maybe I'll watch that. I've, I've never even heard of it. It's before. interesting. It's I well, I, no, I remember seeing the thing, but I thought it was some kind of space like cartoon or yeah. something. And maybe you probably were uh, confusing it with Titan AE. That That's what I'm that, thinking of. Yeah. Titan AE. Yeah. yeah. Which fuck that? I don't want to watch that. It's not that good. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah. Whimsical, fantastical, delight for everyone of all ages. Then they all go to a factory. That's when it begins. Kills fall. A kid falls into a river. Gets sucked into the recycling system. Boat rides straight to hell. Over and over again, children disappear right in front of God and everyone. Heck, if it wasn't for Belching, our hero and his grandfather would have been chopped to bits by the exhaust system. They never did show what happened to the other kids, did they? No. So, more horror than I would have thought. The yeah. boat ride, of course, definitely. Yeah. But the rest of it, you know, you, you got to feel for Augustus Gloom. <laughs> <laughs> that Willy Wonka was definitely a uh, a killer. <laughs> His honorable mentions: Rocky Horror Picture Show musical about Frankenstein ripoff create monsters, axe murders them, hilarity ensues. Dark Shadows, uh, murderous vampire takes on a rebuff witch. Barnabas is a good guy, and he does eat a bunch of hippies. Not that he's judging or anything. And his last one, Showgirls, absolutely terrifying. <laughs> Apparently, there's a Showgirls too. I only know this because of Antoine. Uh, there's a Showgirls too that actually plays like a murder, a murder mystery horror movie. And apparently, it's god awful. I'm sure it is. Um, but if you were a fan of Saved by the Bell as a young man. It delivered and the goods. It did deliver the goods. Yeah, and that, that was really the point. She hasn't done much since then, and that, that kind of makes me sad. It sucks. Like, sometimes you go do something that differentiates you from your old career, and it unleashes all this potential, and you can do so much. And sometimes you do showgirls, and you're ruined. Yeah. It's sad. It's pretty sad. But that's it for the what the fuck did I just watch mm-hmm. movies list. That's... We could come back to this one. This is one, even with our honorable mentions, there's a lot of movies that made me go, what the fuck? Yeah. And we watch a lot of them specifically for this show. Yep. So, I guess that, that's I'm that. I'm sure you're itching to get home to your family. Yeah, I'm, 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 <laughs> I, don't feel, I don't feel myself until I've slipped into that what's, silky soft latex. What's your, then I feel myself. <laughs> what's your fem skin name? Um, it's... Uh, uh, <laughs> I feel like I shouldn't even say anything now because I couldn't fire anything off. <laughs> hmm. I'm just going to go with Gertrude. Gertrude? You're a classy old lady. Yeah. I, sp- I, sp- I smoke and I wear nothing but a feather boa. <laughs> <laughs> While you my, wear my, my rubber name is, titties. My, my name is Gertrude Gazongas. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, as H.P. Uh, Lovecraft once said, as he opened up his mouth and a tiny biff head came out of it. <laughs> If it smells like fish, throw the fucker back. Sun. Do we learn how many different bits there are? Bits number.